Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. Today I wanted to share my everyday makeup drawer for fall. So fall starts on Thursday and the last time I switched up my drawer, I wanna say it was maybe in June or July. So a lot of the products that were in my everyday makeup drawer were like really mattifying base products or really bright, warm, corally blushes, pops of blue in the eyeshadow section. So I just kind of pulled everything out that I wasn't reaching for and included a lot of products I know that I'll love to use during the fall. If you guys are new to these videos, this is like the top section of my makeup collection and it's where I do my makeup every day. So I like to put products in here that I know I'll reach for a lot and then also products I wanna focus on using. So I basically shop my stash, go through my makeup collection and pull out a lot of older favorites so I can rotate through everything Thing throughout the year and then I have a couple of new products in here as well that I'm either testing out or really enjoying so I thought we could just sit down hang out and I'll show you guys what I'm currently using and loving and what I'll be using over the next few months okay let's start with complexion products because I did take out a lot of the products I was reaching for quite a bit during the summer just to switch it up for the fall season so I did include this product it's the elf power grip primer so I decided to repurchase this in my last video I was using the elf jelly pop primer in place Place of this and I do like that one they're very very similar but this really has been my staple primer this year so I decided to grab it again because it does such a great job at extending the wear of your makeup but it's also really hydrating but I also have this one from Essence this one is the hello good stuff primer serum so it's kind of marketed as like a skincare makeup product all in one it reminds me a lot of the Smashbox primerizer which was like my favorite primer for the longest time especially during the fall and the winter if you want something super hydrating, it's almost like a watery serum, but it leaves your skin feeling so refreshed, this product is perfect. It does smell like blueberries, so that's something to keep in mind if you don't like fragranced products, but I feel like once it's on the skin, I can't, I don't really notice it once I apply foundation on top. Essence also released this product not too long ago, the Hello Good Stuff Glow Serum Primer which a lot of people are saying is a dupe for the Glow Recipe Dew Drops. Again, I like this one as a primer because it just preps my skin and leaves it looking super hydrated, which is kind of my goal during the fall season. My skin is still oily, but there's just something about a nice hydrated base. This is a little bit thicker than the other one. It's not quite as runny. They both leave your skin looking and feeling kind of similar, like very glowy, very hydrated. This one does have a watermelon scent. The only other primer that I'm including in my everyday makeup drawer is this one from Catrice, the Prime and Fine Pore Refining Anti-Shine Base. So this one is a mattifying primer but not mattifying in the way that it makes your skin feel super dry. It's almost more of like a smoothing primer. But my issue with a lot of smoothing primers is that they almost have like that slippery silicone feel. And this one is the perfect balance because it does smooth your skin and makes it feel really nice, but it also keeps it matte and it doesn't have like that oily, slippery feel to it. So I really love this one during the fall as well when I don't necessarily want like an incredibly hydrated base, but I want more of a matte base. I just redid my nails last night. These are from Glamnetic, which I've never tried this brand. I usually use static nails, but I thought these were kind of fun. I got them from Sephora. They have like different colors and normally I go like very neutral with my nails, but I thought I would switch it up and try something different and I, I like them. So we'll see if they last, but I do think they're kind of fun, a little bit different. So for powder, pretty much all summer, I was using the Essence All About Matte Powder because this one is incredibly mattifying. So it would lock my makeup into place so well, no matter what foundation I was using. I'll probably still use this during like early fall because there are still some warm days. I also have this powder from Catrice. It's not quite as mattifying as Essence. It's a little more lightweight, so I've been enjoying that one too. And then I have the Beauty Bakery Flower Setting Powder. I have the shade Oat, which is a translucent. I know they have a couple of different options, but I've been loving this one so much. I've actually had this in my collection for a little while, but I recently pulled it back out. I was kind of using it as more of a finishing powder because it is so lightweight, but I love the way this makeup, or this makes my makeup look when I use it as an actual setting powder as well. So it's great both ways. I like to apply this with a little more of a dense brush and really press it into my skin. I also recently got some of those like little velour puffs because they've been popular for a while, but I've noticed them a lot on YouTube, on TikTok, and I do think that makes a big difference as well. Over here on the side, I just have two lip products, so I always keep this one. It's the Too Faced Hangover Pillow Balm. This is typically just something I like to use in the morning before I do my makeup just to prep my lips. 
And then recently I tried the Milani Keep It Full Max Bombshell, and this is a really nice lip plumper. So sometimes I'll use this before I apply a lip product as well, just to prep my lips. I do have the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter. This is shade three. I actually think I'm going to switch this out. I do have a lighter shade. I can't remember if I have one or two off the top of my head, but shade three will probably be a little bit dark for me during the fall. I can kind of go back and forth between them, but I feel like the lighter one will probably be a little more ideal, but this is nice either to mix in with foundation, to use as a primer, to use as a liquid highlighter, so it's always nice to have that on hand. I have three foundations. My favorite foundation ever since I tried it back in, was it like the end of July, the beginning of August? I can't remember exactly because I got the shade F3, which was too light for me, so then I picked up F5, and that's when I really started wearing it. This is the Makeup Revolution IRL Filter Longwear Foundation. It is so good. It makes my skin look extremely smooth. It wears so well. It's very lightweight, incredibly blendable. It really has like an undetectable feel to it. It honestly just looks and feels so good on the skin. So this has been my go-to, which it didn't surprise me because it sounded like a foundation I would like. It surprised me because I really hadn't found anything to top this one since I tried it last spring. It's the Catrice True Skin Hydrating Foundation. Now when I wear this one, it feels not heavy, but it's definitely a little heavier than the Makeup Revolution one. I still really like this one because it's a little more of like a satin finish compared to Makeup Revolution. This is like a true matte finish foundation, but this one isn't quite as matte, which I think will be really nice during the fall as well. So this one is in my drawer just because it is still one of my go-to foundations, of course. I recently tried this product and I love it. It's the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Foundation. I've been meaning to try this for a while, ever since I saw they had like an oil-free matte version. They also have a glowy version too. But years ago, I loved the It Cosmetics CC Cream, and then I just felt like it was a little bit too, I guess, like glowy for my oily skin, and it wouldn't necessarily last how, as well as I wanted it to. This product lasts on my skin so well, but it looks really skin-like. Like, you can definitely blend it out, and it allows my natural complexion to show through, like my freckles, and it doesn't... It doesn't look like I'm wearing foundation, but it evens out my skin tone and it stays in place really well. Okay, I do have quite a few concealers in here. So I have the KVD Good Apple Concealer. I use this to spot conceal just because it is very lightweight, but very, very long lasting. So it's nice under foundation when I do want to spot conceal any areas that need a little more coverage. But under the eyes, I've been using this one the most. It's the Catrice True Skin. I'm actually pretty much out of this. I ordered a new one. I wear the shade Cool Cashmere, which is a little bit light, but I tried the shade Warm Macadamia, which the shade matches, but it's a little bit too yellow. So I feel like Cool Cashmere is my best bet. I recently purchased this Item Beauty Concealer. I think the shade's a little bit light. I got the shade 110. It's very creamy, but it almost has a little bit of a matte finish. So I think if you have dry under eyes, you're probably going to want to avoid this. But if you are looking for more of a full coverage concealer, you will enjoy it. But as you can see, it's just a little bit light, but I think heading into the fall, it will probably be perfect. So I also have this concealer from Kosas. I just recently repurchased it. It, it is the Revealer Concealer and I have the shade 3.5W. My favorite way to wear this concealer is as a spot concealer because it's so creamy and it just looks really skin-like. It has such a pretty finish. In fact, some days when I don't wanna wear foundation, I'll just use this concealer and then apply a little bit of powder. Here's what this shade looks like. This is kind of like a perfect match for me. It's a little bit yellowy on my hand, but I feel like on my face, it doesn't really look too, too yellowy. I've used a couple of different shades, but this one is probably my favorite so far. But I repurchased it because I also wanted to use it under the eyes again, just because it is such a creamy, nice formula. I feel like it will be really nice for the fall season. And then I recently got the ColourPop No Filter Concealer again. It's been a while since I've had this in my collection. I got two shades, Light 16 and Light 18. I used to use this concealer all the time. I basically used it as foundation and I would just set it with powder and it was my favorite during the summertime. It's been a little while since I've used it either in that way or just as an actual concealer. So I wanted to try it out again. This is the shade Light 18, this is Light 16. And I wasn't sure because I used to mix them together. Sometimes I would reach for one over the other, but I'm excited to have it back in my collection, back in my collection because I used to use it 
like every single day. As for cheek products, I do have quite a few cheek products in here. Let's start with cream cheek products. So this has been in my drawer for a few months at this point. It's the Flower Beauty Spotlight Liquid Highlighter and I have the shade Opal. This has been my favorite. It looks so pretty on the skin and every single time I use it, I love how it looks. It looks good on top of powder. It looks great on top of foundation. It's just such a pretty highlighter. I also put this bronzer in my drawer. I've just been rotating through pretty much all of my cream bronzers. I like them all for different reasons. This one's a little bit newer to me. It's the LIS Beauty No Limits Cream Bronzer. I have the shade Motivate. This is a very pigmented bronzer. A little bit goes a long way, but it stays in place really, really well. I think it typically sells out as soon as they restock it on Sephora's website. But if you can get your hands on it, it is a really, really nice option. So I just thought it would be nice for the fall season too. I have this blush from CoverGirl. It's the all over dewy tint in the shade Dreamy Pink. I wanna pick up another shade that I would typically wear more so during the fall. This is a really pretty color that I used a lot during the summer. But this product really surprised me because I wasn't sure if I was going to love it. The last cream blushes that I tried from CoverGirl didn't work for me, but this product is so nice. It has this gorgeous glowy serum texture and it's a little bit more subtle when you first apply it, but you can definitely build it up. I do find that it fades a little bit throughout the day, but it's such a gorgeous product that I feel like I can deal with it because I love the way it looks initially and you can always add a little bit more throughout the day too. So I've really been enjoying this one. Recently, I picked up this blush from the brand AF94. This is Halsey's newer makeup brand that sold at Walmart. This is the Playdate Multi-Use Chick cheek and lip color and I have the shade if you dare. So I wanted to go with a bold shade. I actually think my Walmart was sold out of quite a few shades so I don't think there were a ton of options available at the time but I thought this color would be pretty because it's a little bit different than what I typically wear but it's a shade that I knew I would love during the fall season. I love how this has like a little bit of a glow to it. So you can draw this directly on your cheeks and then blend it in with your fingers or a brush or what I typically do is take the brush and apply this directly to my brush and then to my cheeks because it is such a bold color. But as you can see, like that's not the most intense application. You can definitely build it up as well. So I have been liking this a lot. I feel like it's so nice for the fall. And then I also got this. So I recently picked up the Tarte Man Eater eyeshadow palette and at Ulta if you pick that up or if you purchase that they give you a gift with like three mini Tarte products including this Shape Tape Glow Wand. This is such a gorgeous product. So I know every brand kind of has like their version, not every brand, but a lot of brands have their version of the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter including Elf. And honestly, a liquid illuminator has never really been a big part of my makeup routine, but this product from e.l.f. and this product from Tarte just have me changing my mind. I think I like the Tarte one a little bit better than e.l.f. Obviously, it's a little more expensive, but it just looks so smooth on the skin. It's so pretty as a base, also as a liquid highlighter, as a mix-in. This is definitely a little bit lighter and maybe a little more cool toned than the e.l.f. product, like the shade that I have in e.l.f., so it's nice to have a different color, but I love it. The, the actual texture of this product is so nice. It's just very, very creamy. So I'm working on this little mini version. If I ever use it up, I might purchase a full-sized one, but I feel like it's nice to have a mini because it's not something I use every day. ColourPop re-released their Super Shock bronzers. I have two shades. So this one is Get Sandy, which is the lighter one. And then I also have a darker one in the shade Beachin. I haven't really been enjoying these and honestly, it surprised me because I do love the ColourPop Super Shock blushes so much. Here's what they look like next to each other. I'll swatch them too. But I don't usually like ColourPop's matte Super Shock products, like their eyeshadows or their cheek products. I really only go for the shimmers, metallics, glitters, but I love this product so much. It almost gives your skin like a blurred finish and it's really easy to apply. You definitely get like a lighter, softer, sheer wash of color, but you can build it up if you use a little bit more of an intense or a little bit more of a dense brush. And honestly, they blend out so nicely. So I don't know if ColourPop has improved their formula, if I'm just a little bit more used to using cream products, but I will even use them in the crease. So it kind of has me curious to try out like a matte Super Shock shadow because at this point, I don't think I've purchased a matte Super Shock shadow in years. I just usually go for their shimmer ones. Okay, so moving on to the rest of the cheek products, I have this blush from Item Beauty. This is the Blushin' Like Cream Blush in the shade It's Verified. 
I've talked about this a little bit on my channel. It's a really interesting blush because they call it a cream blush, but it's definitely, I don't know, like I would have never guessed it was a cream if I just used it without reading the description. It feels like a creamy powder. It looks really pretty on the skin. So I've been loving this one a lot lately. I also put this in my everyday makeup drawer. It's the Milani Cheek Kiss Cream Blush in the shade Nude Kiss. These Milani blushes are so pretty, so creamy and dewy. I just thought this shade would be like a really nice everyday shade for fall. This is just a light sheer wash of color, but you can definitely build these up if you add a little bit more as well. So that's kind of like a go-to everyday shade for me. I, I do have a darker blush in this formula, but I can't find it. This is the new Tower 28 shade in Office Hours. I love this formula too. I feel like they're kind of similar. Tower 28 is maybe like a little bit stickier almost. Those colors are kind of close. This one is more warm toned, but this is their new blush in Office Hours. I did think it was going to be a little bit more cool toned, a little more mauve but it's kind of a little bit more rosy, like warm toned rosy. So it is really, really pretty. It's just not what I thought it was going to be based on the online photos. Even in the pan, it looks a little more intense. They do have other options to choose from. If you're looking for like a deeper, cooler toned blush, I might go with one of their other shades, but it is a really pretty shade for everyday wear. I recently picked up these products from Essence. I just did a video on Sunday where I shared the best new drugstore makeup under $10. And if you're looking for some really good affordable products that perform just as great, if not better than high-end products, definitely check that out. I'll link it below. I actually might have a few of the products in this drawer. But I did mention these. These are the Essence Kiss by the Light Illuminating Powders. These really surprised me because I had just tried the highlighter formula from Essence. They're just called the highlighter. And they were a little bit too metallic for me. I felt like they enhanced all of my texture. They just didn't look very good on the skin. So after trying that, I was like, oh, why did I buy these two? Because I just thought I wouldn't like them. But these are so good. They look so smooth on the skin. I'll swatch these for you, but it won't. It won't do them justice. This is the shade Sun Kissed. I mean, you can kind of see how smooth it is on the skin, but you can use them in different ways depending on your preferences. You can use it as a highlighter, maybe a bronzer topper, a glowy blush, like all-in-one product. This is the shade Star Kissed. This one has a mix of like a highlighter, a blush, and a bronzer. This one's a little bit lighter. I'll kind of use this one as like a blush topper if I want something a little more glowy. I think the camera's picking up how smooth it is. It just looks really, really pretty on the skin. So if you tried the highlighter formula from Essence and that was like a little bit too metallic for you, try this formula. Like it looks glowy, but you're not going to apply highlighter that way. If you take like a large fluffy brush, it just gives your skin the most smooth, diffused, soft, glowy look. It's so pretty. Actually, another product that I mentioned in that video that I've been talking about a lot on my channel is the Makeup Revolution Cream Bronzer. I, I don't have anything bad to say about this product, and I feel like most people just love this product. I've read a few comments from some of you guys saying it's maybe just like a little bit too dewy, which I feel like that makes sense because it is such a glowy bronzer, but this is the easiest cream bronzer to use. If you have a hard time with cream bronzers, if they're hard to blend or they look patchy or muddy or they're just like too much on the skin, try this formula. It looks so good. I have the shade light, but there are also, I think, three deeper shades. I'm pretty sure I have the lightest one. And then I have the Flower Beauty Heat Wave Luminous Bronzer. This one's in the shade Sunrise. I've used this bronzer nonstop during the summertime. Like, I don't know if you can tell, this typically has like a nice rounded effect to it. Mine is flat. I'm sure I'll actually be able to use this up eventually. Here's what the swatch looks like. It has this really smooth texture to it, just like a really pretty natural luminosity. It doesn't look like this in the pan. Like in the pan, it doesn't, it looks kind of underwhelming to be honest, but on the cheeks, it is so pretty. I, I use this all the time. I could use it all year round. So that's why it's in my drawer right now. I only have one highlighter in here. This is from Nabla. I picked this up from Ulta a little while ago because it's one of those products that I had added to my cart like a year ago and then I added it to my save later list. And every time I check out on Ulta's website, it pops up and I'm like, should I just try it? Like I'll scroll through that section and always see it. So this is in the shade Privilege. This is really, really pretty. This reminds me of the Wet n Wild Mega Glow highlighters, which I used to love so, so much. I don't know if they still make those because I haven't purchased from Wet n Wild in a while because I do only purchase cruelty-free products, but 
This is so pretty. It's so stunning on the cheeks. So it's pretty much the only highlighter I think I'll be reaching for over the next few months. Then I just have two Patrick Ta blushes. So is this the new one I just got? I just got She's Blushing. Yeah, it's this one. This is so pretty. It's perfect for fall because it's kind of rosy toned. And let me just show you it next to the other one. The other one I have is called She's So LA. On the left is She's So LA and then on the right is She's Blushing. So they definitely look a lot different next to each other. The left is is kind of like my perfect duo for everyday wear but the right is so pretty I love like that red undertone so I can't wait to wear that one I've worn it a few times and I just love how it looks every single time so that's a look at the two Patrick Todd duos I have this has been like my favorite formula this year I might grab another one during the upcoming Sephora VIB sale because I get so much use out of it it's a little bit more of an expensive duo but you do get a cream and a powder so I feel like it's a good deal in terms of value because it is a two-in-one okay let's talk eyeshadow palettes this is a newer launch from Catrice this is the Sandy Days eyeshadow palette so I don't think I've tried a new Catrice palette since they launched like those mini five pans which I love they kind of look like the Natasha no Natasha Denona minis but this formula is really nice so it comes with a mix of mattes and shimmers I've been using it a lot lately just because it is kind of a really fun option for fall I definitely think the shimmers in this palette are better than the mattes you only get like I want to say three mattes this color which I'll use is a base shadow this one and this one which I'll typically use those in the crease I feel like it is missing some deeper matte shadows but I'll just kind of combine it with another palette but these shimmers are so gorgeous they're really vibrant, very intense. You get some warm tones, a couple of cool tones, and it really is such a nice option. I'm really surprised because I feel like Catrice has definitely stepped up their eyeshadow quality. A while ago, I did a video. It was like all about drugstore brands, and I think I said the worst eyeshadow formula at the drugstore is either Catrice or Essence, and both brands have really improved their quality because I reach for their shadows a lot now. This one's from Hard Candy. It's the Blushful Nudes palette. I got this one from Walmart and it's gorgeous. I don't think that I had ever tried a Hard Candy eyeshadow palette before, but again, there are just so many good drugstore eyeshadows and that wasn't the case like 10 years ago, but it's definitely the case now. You do not have to spend a ton of money to get high quality shadow. So this is a really pretty option for fall. The matte shadows are a little bit softer. You can build them up a little, but I would say the standout shadows in here are definitely the shimmers. They're very intense, really, really vibrant. And this is affordable. It's only under, it's under $10. A little more of an expensive palette, but definitely worth it in my opinion is the Tarte Man Eater. So I haven't tried a Tarte palette in a really, really long time. Actually, my cousin got married this past weekend and I did make up for the bridal party, including my cousin's new wife. And she is so gorgeous, like the absolute perfect model to do makeup on because she just kind of makes everything look good. But what palette did she have? She had the Tarte, which one was it? The Tartlet in Bloom? Yeah, it was the Tartlet in Bloom palette. And we used a few shadows from this on her eyes for her makeup look. And it was so pretty. And now I kind of want to purchase this one because the palette itself is gorgeous. And it's just been such a long time since I've tried a Tarte palette. And I feel like I'm kind of missing out. But this is so perfect for the fall season. I love the shimmers in here. The matte shadows are gorgeous. But I just think the color story is so fun. And I've been reaching for it a ton. I feel like this year has not been like the year of eyeshadow palettes for me. I haven't necessarily been like super inspired by them, but this one is just so much fun to use and I know I'll be using it a lot during the fall. This one is the ColourPop Lucky Penny palette. So I got this not too long ago and I think they actually launched this, I wanna say last year, but I didn't get it at that time. And I'm glad that I tried it out this year because it is so pretty, so perfect for fall. If you love like those warm orangey tones with like coppers and like golds, this is the perfect palette because everything blends together in seconds. It is such an easy palette to use. There's a really good amount of pigment to this and you also get a deeper shade to really darken it up if that's something you wanna to do too. But to me, this just kind of screams like the ideal fall palette. I just did a video not too long ago on my favorite palettes for fall. If you guys want to check it out, I included that one, this one, I think these two. I included a lot of older palettes and then a few newer palettes as well. But I've really been loving this one too. It's the Natasha Denona Mini Bronze. Actually, I just brought this one with me when we went out of town. I think, was it the only one I brought? I think I might have brought the mini, oh, the mini Biba as well, just like these two mini palettes. 
but I reached for this one and it was so perfect just for like easy everyday looks but I also used it for like my makeup look for the wedding just for something a little more dramatic too and it's just easy to work with I love it this is the persona identity palette I love this one for the fall it's nice for all year round but I feel like it just has really pretty perfect cooler toned colors in it and a lot of the palettes that I'm reaching for are very warm toned so I thought this would be nice to have as well and then during the fall I will reach for Urban Decay's Naked Heat, Naked Honey but also Naked Wild West so I just threw this one in my everyday makeup drawer. Urban Decay's Naked Heat was in my drawer last season or I guess was it last month? Whenever I did that video last and I did use that one quite a bit during the summer. So I'm excited to get more use out of this one during the fall as well. And then I also have this one from ColourPop. It's newer. It's called Clay It Cool. A lot of people were saying this could be a dupe for the Patrick Ta palette which I'm not sure because I haven't used it yet. There are some similar colors for sure. I don't know that the textures are going to be the same. It has two cream shadows, four metallics, and then four shimmers, but the colors are really pretty, so I'm excited to try this one out. Actually, I have two more mini palettes. I just picked this one up randomly on Ulta's website. I saw this, I think it was under maybe like the what's new section. It's the Stargaze palette. It's just a tiny little mini palette and the color story is really pretty. So it's obviously a cooler toned, very like muted gray toned palette. I don't wear a ton of these shades, but during the fall and the winter, if I am wanting to do something a little more dramatic, I'll usually pull in like cooler toned silvers and grays and then like a deeper shade, like a black or a navy. And this is missing like a couple of deeper tone shadows, but I feel like these shimmers look really promising, especially this one. So I just thought I would try it out because it's been a while since I've tried an Ulta Beauty brand eyeshadow palette. And I do love pretty much all of the products I've tried from their in-house brand. In -house brand. This one is the Urban Decay Naked Half Baked, which is just like a mini palette with some gold shadows, a couple of neutrals. It looks very, very basic, but I use it quite a bit. It just helps to create like quick, easy, everyday looks. These are the Lottie London Color Cloud Longwear Matte Liquid Shadows. These are so pretty. They're so interesting to me because a lot of liquid shadows are shimmer or metallic. You don't see a ton of matte liquid shadows, but Lottie London is a brand that I've been trying more and more, and I'm so impressed. The quality is so good. These really do last on the eyes so well. They're also very, very pigmented, so a little bit goes a long way. So if you're not a fan of like the pastels, they do have a couple of neutral shades as well. This one is called Love and Coco. So I'll just do like one swatch for you and I'll blend it out and you can see just how far this goes. It goes far. Like look at that pigment as I blend it out. It's so pretty. Obviously you don't need that much for your eyes, but it blends easily. It's so smooth, so pretty on the eyes. I, I just can't believe how good these are. I'm just enjoying them as like quick one and done shadows, but sometimes I'll use them in the crease and then blend a highlighter over the eyes for something quick and easy. I just think they're really pretty, really interesting. I don't have a ton of liquid matte shadows, so these have been really fun to play with. Let me finish up with eye products and then I'll show you guys which lip products I'm focusing on for the next few months. These products don't change as often. I have the Smashbox 24 hour photo finish shadow primer. I'm almost done with this so I'm just working on using that up completely and then I'll switch back to the Urban Decay primer potion which is always a favorite of mine so I have those two in here uh, as for brows that's an eyeliner for brows I have the NYX Thick It Stick It Thickening Brow Mascara I wear the shade Espresso this really is just kind of like my go-to for everyday wear so I have this one and then I also have the Kosas Air Brow. This is the most pigmented brow gel I've ever tried. If you are looking for something really intense, like very rich, this is a great option. The NYX one has good pigment, but it's not quite as intense as this one. So this one is great if I don't have time to really fill in my brows and define them because it just kind of makes it look like I did that. It's a little bit, like it's not as precise as using a brow pencil or a brow pen but it is a really nice formula. For my brow pencil, I'm just using the Urban Decay Brow Blade, which is a dual-ended pencil and pen. And then I have the NYX Lift and Snatch Brow Tint Pen in the shade Espresso. Oops, it's having a hard time focusing on these. And then I have the Profusion Good Brow Day Waterproof Brow Pen as well. So I'm kind of more so using brow pens than brow pencils these days because I feel like the brow gels do the majority of the work. 
but I typically just use the brow pencil on the other side of this. I also have a brow pencil from Profusion too. I just took that out of my drawer because I was using it in a recent video. For eyeliner, I have a couple of older products. So I have the Urban Decay Perversion, which is my favorite. I always have that one in here. I have the Stila Stay All Day Waterproof Liquid Liner, which I have been enjoying. Usually I'm all about the brush tip liners, but the felt tip liner has been kind of nice. I feel like it helps me create a softer wing rather than doing something too over the top. And then I have the KVD Tattoo Liner. I also have the Essence Lash Princess Liner, which I don't love. I was I had it in my drawer because I was trying to see how long it would take me to use it up completely, but I just don't end up reaching for it. So I think I'm actually going to declutter this. Apparently I have a lot of mascara in my drawer right now, which is usually the case. I try to keep just like one or two open, but I don't know. I I reach for different mascaras depending on my mood. So my favorite right now is the Tartlet Tubing Mascara, which I never thought I would say, like never in a million years, because I'm not a big tubing mascara fan. I feel like every brand is doing tubing mascaras these days, but this one, it's so funny. I would not think this based on the wand. This one makes my lashes look so long and so dramatic. I love it so much. It stays in place really well and it's easy to remove at night. So it really has been the perfect mascara. This was on sale during Ulta's 21 Days of Beauty and I grabbed two of them because I I love it. I really haven't been reaching for my other mascaras as much. The Milani Highly Rated Anti-Gravity Mascara is still a favorite of mine for sure. This one gives my lashes a little more volume than the Tartlet one. It's not a tubing mascara, but it also makes them look really long too. So this one is just like my perfect all around dramatic mascara. I have the It Cosmetics Superhero, which I love. It makes my lashes look very, very dramatic. I'm almost done with this one, the Item Beauty Lash Snack Lash Snack, I can never say that. It's a really good lengthening mascara. I love this one for the bottom lashes. That's mainly how I've been using it lately just because I do have a few other ones open. And then I have this Essence Volume Booster Lash Primer and this Rare Beauty Mascara. I wanna try these two together because the Rare Beauty Mascara is really hard to remove. It's not a waterproof mascara, but I do feel like it takes a lot to actually get it off my lashes. So I wonder if I use this primer underneath, if it will be a little bit easier to take off. Okay, let's finish up with some lip products. So I got these lip glosses from Mented Cosmetics recently. This formula is really, really pretty. So I have the shade Number One Crayon, and then I also have the shade Bury Me. Here's Number One Crayon, and then here's Bury Me. This is a really pretty formula. It's very lightweight, really glossy, super shiny, not sticky at all. They're a little bit more on the sheer side, but you can also build them up as well. These are from Patrick Ta. These are just really, really sheer, but I've been using these a lot, especially this red one. I've really been into red lip gloss lately just because it looks so pretty on the lips. I did a TikTok and an Instagram reel, if you have Instagram and not TikTok, on like my favorite red lip glosses, both at the drugstore and Sephora. And I didn't realize I have so many I love. So if you're looking for some recommendations, those videos are on my TikTok and Instagram. So this is the Ulta Beauty Gloss Stick. This is in the shade Can't Even. I bought this because I thought it could be a good alternative to the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lips. They describe it as like a gloss stick. That's the name of it. But it is, I mean, I guess it makes sense. It's like a glossy lipstick, but it's just not what I thought it was going to be based on the description. But it's still nice, and I feel like the color is good for fall. This is the NYX Smooth Whip Lip Cream, and I have the shade Chocolate Mousse. This is really pretty, so it kind of has me changing my mind about matte lipsticks. I've said for a while, like, I'm just not into matte lipsticks, but this looks so pretty on the lips. I don't know if you can even tell on my hand, but it has, like, a little bit of a blurred finish to it, which is really pretty when you wear it because it makes your lips look super smooth. It's not transfer proof at all, but as it wears away, you're almost left with a little bit of a stain. So I thought this color would be fun for fall. Another formula that looks really smooth on the lips is this one from NYX. This is the NYX This Is Milky Gloss. So I have a few shades. I have Choco Latte Shake. I also have this red one, which is called Cherry Milkshake. And then I have one of their regular This Is Milky glosses in the color Cookies and Milk. So the regular line is a little bit, it's like very sheer. And I feel like the new ones have more pigment to them. And the new ones look a little more smooth and creamy on the lips. I don't know why they have two different lines. I know these ones 
kind of smell like a milkshake. The original ones kind of have a scent too, but if you buy the ones that have like the little milkshake on them, they look really, really smooth, and the ones without it are a little more sheer. This is the Buxom Gloss in the shade Claire, which is one of my favorites during the fall. And then I have two LA Girl Lumilicious lip glosses. These are really nice. So I talked about these in a recent video. Let me swatch them. This one is peach. And then this one, no, 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 this one is peach and the orangey one is called chill. Anyway, I talked about these in a recent video. These are kind of, they're a little bit thicker. They're like creamy glosses. And I wouldn't say they're sticky, but they're not overly glossy or super slippery like other formulas, like the Tower 28 glosses. But I really like them. They're more full coverage and I've never really been the biggest fan of full coverage lip glosses but I do feel like they have a place. They look really pretty. They last a little bit longer than other formulas. This one is peach and then this one is chill. So as you can see, they're really shiny. Like I said, they have good pigment to them. So if you like pigmented glosses, I think you'll like this formula. I have this Beauty Pie Wonder Gloss Collagen Lip Oil. I do have two other shades, but those are in my purse because I wear those so much. And sometimes I'll use this one as more of like a lip treatment. So I keep this one in my everyday makeup drawer. I do have a couple of Kaja glosses. So this one is Milk Tea, this lighter one. This one is Pink Drink. And then I recently got a set that came with two minis. So this one's also Pink Drink. I'll probably put this one in my purse and then keep the bigger sized one in here. They also did like a really pretty purple as part of the mini set too. I have a few Tower 28 glosses. I guess I said I was going to swatch these products and I feel like I haven't swatched the last few. So let me swatch these for you. This one is pistachio. This one is spicy. This is the new one, Sesame, and then this one is Fearless. I actually haven't been wearing these as much lately just because I have discovered a lot of other formulas I like. So I'm excited to have them back in my drawer because I've just missed wearing them. And this new color, Sesame, this is what I thought the blush was going to look like. It looks really pretty in the lip gloss formula, but I feel like it's not quite as vibrant in the blush formula. So I love this gloss color. I can't wait to wear it during the fall. I put two of my Milani lipsticks in here, just two really bold shades that I'm hoping to wear. The first one is Fleur, the second one is Dahlia. So here's Fleur, here's Dahlia. I really like this formula. It has a really nice matte finish. And again, I wouldn't say it's like a transfer proof finish, but it does stay in place pretty well for like a regular lipstick and it feels really, really comfortable. I have a few of the Milani lip oils. These are usually in my purse because I love those when I'm just on the go. They're so comfortable, but they just give you a really pretty hint of color. Usually before I leave the house, I'll apply like a very light lip liner, usually ColourPop BFF, and then I'll just throw one of those on and they look perfect. And then I will swatch these for you as well. I have three of the Makeup by Mario moisture glow lip serums they recently launched new shades I need to take like a close look at them because I do want to try I'll probably grab one during the next Sephora VIB sale I don't need to purchase a bunch of them this one is apricot glow this one is bronze glow and then this one is mocha glow they are so beautiful like this has been my favorite lip product lately it's just so glossy incredibly shiny Really, really comfortable on the lips, so I just love them. I cannot get enough of them. They're very similar to the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lips, but I like these better, and I've said this before. I don't know if it's just because I like the shades that I have better, but I just think they're so gorgeous on the lips. Okay, you guys, that is the end of my video. I feel like we have been here for a while. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me and chatting about makeup. I would love to know which products you guys are reaching for for the fall season. I'll be back on Thursday with a new video. I don't have a ton of videos pre-filmed right now because we were out of town. So the good, or what was I going to say? The good part, the good... I guess the good thing about that is that my schedule for the rest of the month and the beginning of October is pretty much wide open. So let me know if there's anything specific you guys want to see on my channel and I can definitely film it. I'm going to do a full face of drugstore, a couple of fall looks, but otherwise I'm open to suggestions. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys on Thursday with a new video. Bye.